The average lifespan of someone living with bipolar disorder is a decade less than the general population. To be exact, we live eight to 12 years less than someone who doesn't have the illness. I was devastated to learn this, and I'm not even finished yet. Bipolar is so hard on the mind, body, and soul that our risk of death is nearly three times greater than the general population. Three times. All of this puts the life expectancy of someone with bipolar disorder at around 67 years old. Let that sink in for a moment. Longevity also depends on the age of onset. People who are diagnosed with bipolar at a younger age tend to have shorter lifespans. The average age that people are diagnosed is mid to late 20s. I was diagnosed at 27, but I can trace episodes back to my teenage years. Our mental and physical health are so much more connected than we realize. The toll that bipolar takes on our bodies is incredible. Physical illnesses associated with bipolar disorder are considered to be major contributing factors in reducing life expectancy. Bipolar disorder is associated with higher rates of cardiovascular disease, cancer, diabetes, respiratory disease, metabolic syndrome, and of course, an increased rate of suicide. One of the lifestyle factors we have most control over is tobacco use. The prevalence of tobacco smoking and bipolar disorder is up to 75%. Smoking on top of having bipolar disorder is a brutal combination. My father had undiagnosed bipolar disorder and was a smoker. He died of a heart attack at 51 years old. The chances of experiencing a heart disease related death are significantly higher among those with bipolar disorder. Part of this is due to a cluster of symptoms known as metabolic syndrome, which I mentioned earlier. It's considered a gateway to diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Signs of metabolic syndrome include high blood pressure, high triglyceride levels, inflammation, obesity, and blood sugar imbalances. If you haven't gotten blood work done in a while, it's time to check under the hood. Stop being afraid of what you might find out or telling yourself that you'll get around to it later. Make an appointment now. Pause the video if you have to. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Most people have no idea how susceptible we are to suicide. Researchers estimate that up to 60% of people with bipolar disorder will attempt suicide at least once in their lifetime. Large studies have demonstrated that suicide rates are over 10 times higher than the general population. One in five people with bipolar disorder do not survive this illness. One in five. All of the factors I've mentioned so far contribute to us having a lower life expectancy. So what can we do to mitigate this? How do we go about improving our life expectancy? According to the World Health Organization, there are a few key lifestyle factors that play major roles in how long we live. First and foremost is diet. The keto diet has shown a lot of promise among those with bipolar. It's helped a lot of people lose weight. If losing weight isn't your top priority, then focus on nutrition. Fruits, veggies, whole grains, and lean meats are where it's at. I do a lot of nutritional smoothies and protein drinks myself. I try to stay away from sugary juices and refined carbs. Next is avoiding substances, specifically alcohol, tobacco, and illicit drugs. I understand how strong the desire to escape suffering is because I live with this illness. Self-medicating with substances has almost become synonymous with bipolar. The National Alliance on Mental Illness states that over half of people with bipolar disorder have a history of abusing illicit drugs, while 44% have abused or are dependent on alcohol. The third lifestyle factor is movement, exercise. We need to get our heart rate up for 30 to 60 minutes every day. Now this is a hard one for me. Exercising when I'm depressed is literally painful. Sometimes all I can do is a short walk or some stretches from bed. If I'm manic, I might do too much and overdo it. So it's all about balance. I do the best I can with each given day. 
The last factor I want to mention is blood pressure reduction. There's a lot of ways to do this. Eating less salt, managing stress, quitting smoking, quality sleep, even meds can make a big difference. High blood pressure exponentially increases the chances of heart disease and stroke. Everything the World Health Organization said is really common sense stuff. Diet, exercise, stay away from substances, watch your blood pressure. Something they didn't mention is treating the underlying mental illness first. It's like the source of all the tiny fires we're trying to extinguish. If my bipolar is properly managed, my diet is more regulated, I crave substances a lot less, I exercise more consistently, and my blood pressure stays within the normal range. I'm literally going to live longer because of treating the bipolar first. A giant thank you for spending time with me today. If you want to send me a confidential message right now or arrange a time to connect by phone, there's a link in the video description where I can be reached. Take extra good care of yourselves and I'll be back here soon with more Polar Warrior videos. Stay well.